This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, so today we are going to discuss about zoonosis. So as we all know uh, that the recent pandemic which we are going through, uh, COVID, is also most likely a zoonosis. So we'll have the ice breaking today with that. Uh, so let us discuss about COVID and its zoonotic origins.
Okay, so as we saw in the video, many, many diseases can have zoonotic origins and uh, zoonotic diseases are not only uh, very common at the same time, they are also a favorite of uh, many examiners. If it doesn't come as a theory question, it can come as a, a part of your viva and you will be asked to list out the diseases in long questions. And then you may be asked about a particular zoonotic disease. So in this uh, particular class today, we'll discuss about uh, what are zoonotic diseases. And then we'll discuss about the important viral, parasitic, and bacterial diseases which have zoonotic origins. And um, uh, I'll discuss most of the common points regarding uh, these zoonotic diseases. Uh, but you have to go back to the chapters which have been already covered for you and then you have to revise them, okay? So uh, just now we have discussed that many diseases can be uh, zoonotic and about 75% of all emerging diseases always have a zoonotic origin. So as we are going through this uh, present pandemic, uh, maybe bats, maybe pangolins, maybe some other animal is responsible, but uh, we are sure of uh, one thing that it may have a zoonotic origin. Okay, so zoon is basically animal and zone is a disease. So zoonotic diseases are uh, diseases which originate from animals. And basically these are uh, diseases and infections which are naturally transmitted from vertebrate animals to humans. As WHO gave in 1959 as the uh, definition of zoonotic diseases. So most of them are uh, diseases which are primarily those of animals and man can be an accidental host. So uh, that is what uh, primarily can be a zoonotic infection. So any infectious disease that can be transmitted, it may be a vector uh, which is responsible, but it has to be from animals, both wild and domestic animals to humans or from humans to animals, that is a reverse zoonosis. A reverse zoonosis in which uh, humans uh, transmit it to animals. So xenozoonosis is uh, transmitted by transplantation between species. So this is just a term uh, you should know. So uh, these are the different terms uh, in connection with the zoonotic diseases. The uh, classical or the traditional concept of zoonosis is that an animal with a disease and uh, this particular disease is transmitted uh, by the transmission of the pathogen to man. For example, tuberculosis, which is having bovine origins, or brucellosis, which we have already discussed. But the modern or uh, current concept is that uh, there can be a clinically normal animal, and uh, the transmission is there of a hazardous pathogen to man. So it can be Campylobacter or the Verotoxigenic Escherichia coli. So we never know. So the animal may be uh, clinically normal. They may not have a particular disease. Uh, they uh, may not suffer from the disease, but they may be harboring that particular pathogen. Okay? So uh, many pathogens are, have their zoonotic origin, as we discussed in the video, about 60% of all pathogens can be zoonotic and about 75% of emerging diseases are zoonotic. And viral diseases are more common and uh, more than 99% of the viruses remain to be discovered because many of them uh, uh, we may suffer and we may get well, but we may not know that we have uh, had that particular disease. So you can see many uh, different organisms are there uh, which can have a zoonotic origin. There is a huge potential for future zoonotic emergence, especially because there has been a recent, uh, not uh, exactly recent, but in the recent past, 
that has been there has been a change in how we have perceived our environment uh, there have been a lot of changes in the environment a uh, huge in mass cutting down of trees uh, deforestation and uh, global warming so many uh, points can be there uh, which can be uh, responsible for zoonotic emergence so emerging zoonotic diseases like swine flu bird flu plasmodium knowlesi malaria sars Uh, the recent sars cov2 mad cow disease so many be maybe uh, the emerging zoonotic diseases and uh, hanta virus uh, in the usa uh, avian influenza bovine spongiform encephalitis nipa virus so all of them are emerging and all of them are zoonotic so there are different uh, etiological agents like for example bacterial zoonosis like anthrax brucellosis plague leptospirosis salmonellosis uh, lyme disease and uh, viral zoonoses like rabies arbovirus infections kasanu forest disease yellow fever influenza and rickets cell zoonoses like murine typhus tick typhus rat typhus q fever and protozoal zoonoses like toxoplasmosis trypanosomiasis leishmaniasis helminthic zoonoses like echinococcus you already remember the uh, disease transmitted from dogs uh, or hydatid disease and teniasis cystosomiasis and rapunculiasis and fungal zoonoses like deep uh, mycosis like histoplasmosis cryptococcus and superficial dermatophytes and there can be ectoparasites also like scabies and myelases so how do human beings become infected as we saw in the video there can be a direct or an indirect route uh, for example directly the person is exposed to the animal so to direct contact or through indirect contact like the uh, different uh, body fluids uh, from the animals or maybe through a vector so who are most at risk naturally those people who are coming more uh, in contact maybe direct or indirect contact with infected animals like abattoir workers poultry workers farmers veterinarians and pet owners and uh, th those uh, factors which can promote is uh, naturally frequent contact with animals Overlap, overlap with the wildlife habitat, uh, like bear grills is uh, going into the forests and uh, eating all sorts of things. So mm, one of my favorites actually. So anyway, uh, poor animal sanitation and uh, poor personal hygiene and intensive livestock uh, production. So all these factors may be responsible why zoonosis may be emerging. So and uh, naturally there is an etiological classification like uh, viral bacterial parasitic and mycotic uh, zoonotic infections and uh, as you may be remembering avian influenza basically uh, they they are uh, there in different birds uh, the birds from siberia other birds who can be uh, there who uh, stay in colder regions and the virus is maintained in those lower temperatures and they have a normal cycle with the waterfowl so uh, avian influenza has a normal influenza cycle uh, it's going on but somehow it may be carried on to domestic birds in some cases and uh, in those cases it may lead to a pandemic disease cycle and mammals like pigs can act as a mixing vessel like in, like in swine flu uh, we have discussed that what happens is uh, the uh, uh, pig acts as the mixing vessel and the human and the bird viruses all of them can be mixed because there are uh, eight uh, pieces of uh, rna fragments of the influenza virus so basically uh, the influenza virus can be reassorted and uh, changed and then it can come onto humans so that is how uh, there can be uh, transmission from birds or from uh, mammals and then to humans so this is uh, what happens in influenza and uh, then in rabies as you already know there can be reservoirs like canines or even cats bats or raccoons and the, the rabies virus it is a rhabdovirus it is transmitted to the saliva of the infected animals and uh, once the human is bitten uh, then uh, he may have seizures paralysis and fever uh, and in very less cases uh, the human gets well and uh, they may also succumb to the disease so it is an acute highly fatal viral disease of the cns caused by the rabies virus and in india especially the rabies accounts for many deaths up to 20 10000 deaths annually and uh, many bites in india are by dogs 
out of which 60% are strays and 40% are pets. And uh, rabies is present all throughout India except in the uh, islands of Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar. And there is an incubation period of about three to eight weeks. And then there is Lhasa fever, uh, which is uh, found predominantly in West Africa, particularly uh, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. And the rat is the uh, reservoir. And through infected urine and feces, uh, transmission can occur. And man-to-man -man transmission can also occur through infected body fluids. So this is a viral hemorrhagic fever. Lhasa fever is a, uh, actually a very, very uh, highly fatal disease which occurs in uh, certain places and uh, it uh, can uh, cause uh, many deaths. And then there is West Nile fever in the reservoir of birds and uh, the West Nile virus is transmitted through mosquito bites uh, from the bird and then uh, the mosquito picks up the virus and then transmits it to the human beings. So then this cycle may continue. So the humans have fever and flu-like symptoms in West Nile. Then there is bovine spongiform encephalopathy. I think you might be quite small. When there was a huge uh, outcry because of mad cow disease uh, in England, in which uh, uh, what happened was uh, the agent is a prion or a uh, infectious proteinaceous agent. It doesn't exactly have uh, DNA or RNA. Uh, it doesn't have a nucleic acid and it, the infectious agent is basically a, a proteinaceous uh, particle. And this is transmitted by infect, uh, eating infected beef. And uh, basically, why is it known as spongiform? Because uh, the brain, once you do an autopsy, you can find that uh, there are uh, sort of uh, sponge-like uh, things. And uh, once you see the uh, cell also, the cell which is infected in there also you can see uh, lots of uh, vacuole like things and that is why it is known as spongiform encephalopathy. So uh, neurological disorders that worsen over time and uh, basically supportive treatment but uh, these uh, diseases usually they worsen over a longer period of time but usually the patient dies. So uh, usually it is treated. Then there can be parasitic uh, zoonosis like Toxoplasmosis, as you might remember, so it is a single cell parasite known as Toxoplasma gondii, and it is infected uh, by, by it, it is transmitted by touching infected cat feces or eating undercooked meat or contaminated uh, water. And then there is uh, flu like symptoms, and uh, medications, if uh, needed, they are given. And uh, from the uh, mother to the baby, it can be transmitted, and the babies can have. Uh, different types of disorders. So there can be eye and brain damage also. So you might remember about toxoplasmosis. Basically, uh, it can undergo merogony or it can also undergo, uh, you can see the gametogony also it can undergo, the male gamete and the uh, female gamete give rise to the oocyst. And uh, this occurs in the cat. And what happens is the cysts which contain bradyzoids, uh, they can be there and it can be there in the rats. And this cycle usually goes on between the cats and the rats and all. And uh, the oocyst, once it is shedded, uh, you can uh, see that uh, the cycle is going on. But uh, somehow, if the human is infected, it can be through any other animal or uh, through cat. And then uh, different uh, parts of the body can be damaged, like the brain, the eye, the developing fetus can be having some sort of congenital disorders. And then the heart also can be in. Uh, affected. So uh, this is the uh, thing with toxoplasmosis. So there can be bacterial zoonosis also like plague. Plague is an important uh, zoonotic uh, disease of the past and uh, this is a deadly infectious disease that is caused by Yersinia pestis. It is an ancient disease and has caused three pandemics in the 6th century and there have been fatal outbreaks in uh, Maharashtra and Shimla and uh, yeah, the latter one was after the earthquake uh, took place. And then it is transmitted by the black rat and the rat flea. That is Xenopsiella chiopis. And uh, the transmission is by dro droplet contact or direct physical contact, by soil contamination, airborne transmission or fecal transmission, vector-borne transmission carried by the rat flea. So it can occur. So you can see here there is the uh, lesion. So there can be uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, meningitis, 
or multi organ failure also uh, the symptoms begin after about 2 to 8 days you may remember about the bubo the tender lymph nodes that occur uh, wherever the bite of the rat tree is there so uh, in the nearby draining lymph nodes the bubos will occur and uh, because of these bubos and the blackening of the body so you after some time the body will also become black so uh, uh, these were the things which have been uh, uh the scourge of uh, human since that's something then there is tuberculosis uh, that is by Mac mycobacterium bovis uh, the reservoir are uh, cattle and transmission can be through unpasteurized milk raw meat or droplets and aerosols or even mycobacterium avium which is an atypical mycobacterium and uh, where the reservoirs are birds and this is a very important risk for the immunocompromised people like those people on hiv on chemotherapy transplant patients so those people can have atypical mycobacteria like mycobacterium then there is anthrax which causes as you remember it, uh, the malignant pustule malignant edema wool sorters disease rag pickers disease etc and anthracos is for coal is uh, this uh, this disease was named like that it is caused by the spores of the bacillus anthracis and uh, it is transmitted by that the it is primarily a disease of the domesticated and wild animals such as uh, herbivores such as sheep cows horses and goats and the uh, soil which is rich in organic matter can also uh, be more uh, helpful in transmitting the disease so these are aerobic uh, organisms these are gram positive rods as you see in this picture so these uh, spores are inhaled ingested or come into contact with the skin lesion on the host and then they may reactivate and then multiply rapidly so infected blood to broken skin or by consuming diseased animals flesh uh, there can be pulmonary gastrointestinal or even cutaneous anthrax so there are different uh, species of the uh, brucella organism uh, like brucella abortus is from cattle melitensis is from goat or sheep as you remember this is the type of uh, picture that we see on gram stain these are gram positive bacilli but uh, the empty spaces here you can see these are the spores which do not take up the gram stain as you might remember so uh, they look exactly like uh, bamboo sticks or something like that so like that they look so uh, brucella militensis and suis are more virulent and uh, these are small non uh, motile a uh, gram uh, positive organisms and uh, these are uh, having an incubation period of about 5 to 60 days and uh, undulant fever is a characteristic undulant fever means the fever comes and goes there will be spikes of fever and again it will reduce so it is an undulant or intermittent or irregular fever with a variable duration so there is transmission to human beings uh, by direct contact with infected tissues or ingestion of raw milk inhalation of infectious aerosols inoculation with animal vaccines and they are shed in large numbers in the milk and all so that is why the milk ring test the other tests you might remember uh, the rose bengal test so those tests are done so that the milk which is delivered to us is uh, free of these pathogens and that is why all the milk packets that you take uh, those are all pasteurized and then they are distributed so pasteurization eliminates the organism and uh, usually the dairies they have a different uh, battery of tests to ensure that they do not transmit the pathogen. so then there is cytokosis uh, caused by chlamydophila cytosy you might remember there was a chapter chlamydia at the end of the chlamydia chapter there was another uh, small organism which was given that is chlamydophila cytosy so why it is known as cytosy because it is spread from cytosine birds like the parrot and other uh, kinds of birds it is an obligate intracellular bacterium you might remember rickettsia uh, mycoplasma and uh, chlamydia chlamydophila these are all intracellular organisms even though they are bacteria they are uh, uh, intracellular obligate intracellular organisms and they are transmitted from birds to humans and uh, you might remember there were uh, the uh, inclusion bodies there were the elementary bodies so in the um, organisms and then there are routes of infection like the uh, inhalation or mouth to be contact or handling 
infected birds, plumage and tissues, and uh, even brief exposures can lead to infection. So then there was Q fever. You might remember in the uh, Rickettsia chapter, there was Q fever caused by Coxilla burnetii. Even though Coxilla is not uh, a, a typical organism, even then it is an uh, intracellular organism and it is a highly infectious organism. Even one organism can cause disease. Uh, the reservoirs are goats, sheep, uh, cattle, and uh, uh, the transmission to humans is through uh, uh, urine, feces, milk, in birth fluids, and inhalation of the organism from contaminated environments. Uh, so leptospirosis, you might remember in the uh, uh, spirochete chapter, it was given. So leptospira, uh, ectera hemorrhagicae, and other, uh, other species are also there. So this is the most important species, Ictera hemorrhagica, and there is Icterus, that is jaundice, and hemorrhage also. So there is uh, motile, and these are uh, aerobic organisms with hooked ends. You might remember like uh, uh, both ends are curved, and this is a spirochete. So uh, this is under the uh, dark uh, uh, fluorescent microscopy. So these are uh, bacteria, the patient might be bacteremic for, seven to 10 days and leptospirouric uh, in the urine also, it will be eliminated about one week to several months. So leptospira, you might remember, these are uh, caused through bacteria of the genus leptospira. Rats and other rodents are the most common carriers. They can infect uh, all kinds of wild and domestic animals and urine of these animals will contaminate the soil and mud and humans can get infected with contact with uh, urine or other body fluids, water, soil, or food. And then uh, it can cause, it can be a serious disease like meningitis, respiratory disease, liver failure, kidney damage. All these things can occur due to leptospirosis. So uh, there were uh, different uh, types like hard joe, camicola, hemorrhagica, pomona, etc. So, uh, contaminated with leptospires, if urine, the soil, water, tissues, so they can transmit it. So, you might remember Bartonella also, it caused a cat scratch disease, Bartonella hensile, through a bite or scratch of the infected cat. So, subsequent lymphadenopathy, uh, after papules are there, lymphadenopathy can be there. So, uh, it is transmitted from the cats. Even the rat flea can be involved. So then there is uh, Lyme's disease, which is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi. It was from the same chapter, that is uh, from uh, Spirochi chapter. You might remember this, uh, the black-legged tick, which in feeds on infected deer, it uh, picks up the bacterium and bites the human. So this is a hard tick, you can see in the picture, this is a hard tick. And then uh, this uh, human symptoms like rash, arthritis, uh, fever, swollen lymph nodes, neurologic signs, and Heart problems can be there. So there can be different mycotic zoonosis also, like aspergillosis, blastomycosis, cryptococcus, dermatophytosis, histoplasmosis, porotrichosis. Many of them can be systemic diseases, and mm, some of them are dermatophytosis. They can also be uh, transmitted uh, skin diseases. This can be also transmitted from. So you can remember, like uh, uh, birds like poultry can be responsible for avian influenza, salmonellosis, campylobacter enteritis, and then uh, uh, the pigeons can be responsible for histoplasmosis, cryptococcus, cytoposis, uh, candidiasis, salmonellosis, St. Louis, encephalitis, and West Nile fever. And then there can be primates, which can be responsible for a huge list of diseases like amoebiasis, campylobacter diarrhea, the diseases caused by Salmonella, Shigella, uh, Helicobacter, Yellow Fever, Falciparum Malaria, Nolacy Malaria, Monkeypox, Hepatitis A, and Hepatitis. So dogs can be responsible for rabies, brucellosis, leptospirosis, giardiasis, babesiosis, leishmaniasis, intestinal worms, blastomycosis, histoplasmosis, and aspergillosis. So cats uh, also can be responsible, like we discussed, cat scratch disease by Bartonella hensile rabies or even toxic processes. So thank you for your patient listening. We'll also uh, see a short video right now about uh, zoonotic
for diseases. So, um, one second. So anyone can just unmute and uh, summarize what we discussed in today's class. Yes. Okay. So, uh, thank you for joining us today. I hope that uh, you and your uh, 